The Tangent Egg Podcast is aimed at a mature audience. It contains themes that are not appropriate for all listeners. It's important to note that we are not experts. We routinely have no idea what we're talking about and are just three idiots sitting around a table. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to Tangent Egg Podcast. I'm Seth, and as always, I am joined by Swoosh and Jondo. Hi. Hello. And, uh, I mean, first up this week, which is... I can't take this seriously, man. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's hard. So, the Pokemon yeah. company's released the mock image for its its newest plushie that it's putting out. Of all the, the amazing, popular Pokemon out there, like, oh my god, this is going to be amazing! It's Wiglet. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not safe for work, Diglett. Like, why would they do this? <laughs> Weirdest thing is the promotional image. It looks like a penis. It does. I, it looks so much like a like, it, it honestly just like because it's in a mound of dirt as well or sand where it is so that looks like just a sack and then it's the wiglet and then they have that nice pink fucking spear on top so <laughs> it's just an uncircumcised dick yeah yeah uh, I don't know very pale <laughs> yeah but yeah it's, I, this is the this is the Pokemon Company's iteration of the vibra- vibrating Harry Potter fucking yeah broomstick broom. or, yeah <laughs> Oh, like, that dragon is gonna license his motherfucker quick. Oh, guaranteed. <laughs> but like, I want to know who so okayed this. Girls with one of these in their cleavage. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Within like, the week, be the next uh, Twitch matter. So, yeah. yeah. It's just a Pokemon toy. No. Yeah. <laughs> and then along comes an entire separate section just for Wiglet. Oh yeah. But, oh, <laughs> God, like I want to know how this got put forward in like a, a meeting and made it all the way to production and everything else like how did this get QA'd did, did no one just go uh, guys are we just making a dick is this what we're doing how did they pick this character of all the iconic characters that well, got mean, in that fucking universe for almost every character they've ever made yeah so the Wiglet was gonna get one sooner or later true Still, like, there's still so many others, like, redo other more popular ones that don't look like this. Yeah. Like, I think the, the bigger thing, though, is um, that they made it so big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it they've done it's, um, it's entire tenet- Pokedex lines in the mini city plushie line that they do. Yeah. And it would have been much smaller, and it would have fit in with that much better. But, like, they made it big, so it's like, we thought this was a premiere plushie. Yeah. What? It, it's a 10 inch fucking NSFW yeah. blushy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like it's, I, I don't get it. This is someone's kink in at the, the company, guaranteed. Like, yeah. someone's been waiting, like, yes, I can finally do the thing. They filed me with Diglett, but I'll get them with <laughs> Yeah, this oh. is completely unnecessary for him to have done this. Yeah. Yeah. Like, goddamn. I mean, it, it means that we get to laugh at them again. That's always fun. But, but I, don't, uh, like, I don't even know how many fucking Pokemon there are now. Like, I think we're the... getting up to like 800-ish? Yeah, I'll give me a minute, I'll find out. Because like, I, I barely remember half of them. I remember the original 151, but that's about it. Either way, it's too many for them to have chosen this to do in this fucking way. Yeah. There are ones I would much like, rather than make... Like, again, essentially. Yeah. They, they could have done better iterations of previous ones, or just done something else. Or just make the evolution of it. So then you've got three How of them. How many do you think there are? 870. At this point, I'd say near a thousand. Dan's much closer. Ooh. Holy shit. 1,010. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> of, of over a thousand options. Oh. They choose a 10 inch penis. Yeah. Yeah. And then instead of like <laughs> being like, no, no, we'll put it out as part of some of the Dex line stuff where it's all like small scale. It'll be, no, no, we're going full thing. Full 10 inch. I think, Let's go. okay, no, the only reason I can think of that they would make it big is because they have to lean into the, the whole penis thing at this point. If they made a smaller one, guaranteed that would be turning up everywhere. No, you see, this time they've done a 10 inch wiglet and it's white. And then in about a month's time, they're going to do a shiny version, which is 12 inches, and it's black. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <damn it. laughs> 
<laughs> the weird thing is, I can almost guarantee it'll happen at some point. Like, oh. If they don't make it, someone else will. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh. shall we move on? From- <laughs> yes, we shall move on from, from the dick Dong. Swear to God, this is not just us talking about a dick puppet the entire episode. <laughs> Oh, we Maybe could try. Yeah. Not to say that we couldn't. <laughs> we definitely could, but let's not. So, uh, uh, Disney Plus has decided it's going to go down the same route as Netflix, and it doesn't like Password Jerry. Yeah, we called that. Fucking like, called it. Fucking. It was always going to happen. Yeah. Once one of the big ones did it, the others would follow suit, because at that point, fuck you, you have to do what we say. Yeah. But... Like, they're, they're getting rid of password sharing, they're also increasing the price. So, well, so is Hulu and several other companies are all jacking the prices up. Yeah, this the very next step will be all of these companies bitching that piracy is on the increase. Yeah, it's we're going to start the seeing cycle, and they're going to start yeah. pushing for like a whole piracy thing again. Like, remember back in the day when you buy a DVD and it would yell at you for buying a DVD? Yeah, it was like. Well, it, it was, no, it, It'd give you the option of having a digital copy, but only if you use that digital copy from their specific from their specific store. Yeah. And then they shut down that store for six months later, so you no longer have a digital copy. Pretty much. Mm. Uh, and you yeah. weren't allowed. You technically not allowed to back up your own DVDs. No. Like you can't do anything. It's like, but I bought this. I won't be able to use this. I have to buy it again. No, screw you. But yeah, yeah. it's fucking stupid. Like at some at some point it's got to hit a fucking turnaround where they either have to settle on a fucking price or the next fucking version of whatever form of entertainment will come about and yeah. stream will be on the disc on the decrease i'm hoping it for the show like fucking something yeah look it, it was simple netflix we all loved it we all paid for it and then netflix was not the only game in town and it was okay because there was only two and then there was 15 and everyone hated it yeah and then Disney came in and went, well, we've got all the good content you want. So you only need to pay for one again. And now it's trading again. It's yeah. just, it keeps... How many times do we have to teach these old men this lesson? Yeah. Just yeah. like, guys, come on. Like, we understand. Just don't get greedy. Like, don't do it. You, you can go the route of uh, Prime Video. Uh, and it's like, it's got a base streaming service. But when you go into it, from there you can also sign into uh, Paramount Plus, Hulu, uh, and a couple yeah. other ones. So it now is just turning back into fucking pay TV where you're paying for channels. Yeah. Yep. So uh, it's going to cycle back around that way. Then they're going to want to add more, put more ads into it. The fact yeah. is like, the fact that you're paying a subscription and you're still getting ads at all is insane. Fucking oath. Like yeah. we but, left Foxtel for that reason. Like uh-huh. they're giving the option to pay for ads in it. Yeah. Like mm. sure. It's a cheaper version, but I'm paying so I don't have fucking ads. This yeah. is ridiculous. I, I hate it. it. It's just money grubbing. And even if it wasn't, if, if it was still fairly priced, the second they start putting ads in, I would have been like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm out. Like, mm. That's just money grubbing, dishonest behavior to me. But at this point, like, Disney's had a few L's in their fucking recent release movies and yeah. whatever else. So mm. I'm guessing they're just trying to claw something back. Yeah. I mean, Marvel's it's, kind of on the de- on decline now, so... Yeah, well, there's so many, so many times you can kick a horse before you've kicked all the way through and you're only left with Viscera. Pretty much. I, I, I don't think I care about a single character they've still got in the MCU. I, I, I'll, I'll still stand by Guardians 3. Yeah, Guardians, Guardians 3 is pretty good. good. Yeah, like, Guardians 3, because they the characters are in it were established at, in like yeah. the first iteration. But there's no one, no other characters that I could really give much of a fuck about like Pretty that much. first series of Loki Even, was cool I really don't have much of an interest in watching the second one after what they've done with every other series yeah I mean even with the um, the pre-end game characters they're not even getting 100% I mean no. Multiverse of Madness had Doctor Strange in it and it was still a meh yeah. it was not amazing it was fun at certain points but it was very creepy in others it was, it was fun I mean I think the weirdest bit is you've got all these established characters and all these like big IPs that, of the new revival movies the two best ones are Guardians 3 with the bunch of weird space characters yeah god damn it why did you make me cry about a fucking raccoon yeah, you fucking nice. bitches god that backstory um, hurt and um, Shang-Chi and the Ten Rings yeah 
Uh, I it's actually, a kung fu movie. I did yeah. like that movie. It was pretty good. Um, like that could have not been a Marvel movie and just been a a kung fu movie with yeah. with like a yeah spiritual elements, and it would have done a fucking great movie. Like it I, would have been a great popcorn movie. It didn't have yeah. to be a Marvel movie for it to be a good movie. I think they want to gear up to having like the not Avengers teams now, like spreading out yeah. to that kind of stuff. Because there is an, essentially a magical version of the Avengers, um, which is run by Sorcerer Supreme, which in this case would be Wong. So Midnight Sun. Yeah. So I'd be keen to see Wong being like leader of the Midnight Suns. It'd be fun. Yeah. Although speaking of like uh, movie adaptations that are probably pretty good popcorn stuff. Has anyone seen the uh, live action trailer for Zom 100? No, actually. No. I did not know um, there was a live action for this. Yeah. Ooh. So, I can't remember when it's coming out off the top of my head. <clears throat> I love um, that anime. But, I mean, if you haven't seen Zom 100, it's probably going to be really good. <clears throat> yeah, no, I'm... Because that would just be a zombie movie. It would work really well. They don't have well, to see, do... that. To me, that's the problem. Okay. Uh... Jordan's looking at me like I'm speaking French, so... <laughs> I, I have no idea what it is, so I'm right. just going to listen until I Zom pick 100 up a is an anime series that's running right now. Um, about a, a dude who worked for a black company for three years, basically grinding him into the dirt. Yeah. And then the zombie apocalypse happens. And he's like, fuck yeah, I don't have to go to work! Yeah, he's just <laughs> so happy he never has to work again. So the big thing with it, though, is the the start of the show is like keeps desaturating on colour. Yeah. Because the idea is he eventually is so worn down that he sees the world in monochrome. Mm. Sucks a lot. And then once he realizes he doesn't have to go to work anymore, everything's color. Yeah. And very (laughs) vibrant color. So some of the blood isn't even blood colored. It actually looks like everything's been smattered in paint. Yeah. It's It's a really really nice style. It's interesting aesthetic. Yeah. They don't do it for the live action. It's just a straight zombie movie. Ah, yeah, fair. So, so they lose a whole level of personality from the main character. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be interesting. Little disappointing. And they use like they match a lot of the trailers from the original anime in the live action one. So it's a weird, bizarre thing to look at side by side. Like mm. the anime is amazing, and I think people who haven't seen the anime will probably really, really like Zom One Hundred. I yeah. get the feeling it's gonna be one of those like breakout movies for Netflix. Mm. But you know, I am watching the the anime, and the art style is amazing. Yeah, I, I'm not going to lie. Like, the art style is pretty fun. And I love the character. He's so fun. Yeah. He goes out into a zombie apocalypse... For beer. ...because he wanted to laze around the house drinking beer. And he didn't have any <laughs> beer. So he went on a beer run. I love the fact <laughs> that he's, like, crawling down a drain pipe and meets two people who are hiding from zombies. It's just all like, oh, hey, guys. I, do you want anything? I'm doing a beer run. <laughs> and these two are like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Because oh. the basic setup is, is because it's the apocalypse, he writes up a, a list of a hundred things he wants to do before he, turn, he before he inevitably gets killed and turned into a zombie. Yeah. Because um, the full title of the show is Zom 100, Bucket List of the Dead. Yeah. <laughs> Although, like, it is one of those uh, anime that switches from, like, funny stuff to serious, actual zombie yeah. stuff, and I really like that because it switches really well. Yeah, it does. Like, I think it actually makes the um, horror stuff feel more horror. Yeah. Because you've got this guy who's got this, like, suddenly positive outlook on life, and then, you know, you slight spoilers for second episode, that family he meets on the drain pipe, mm. when he comes back by, they're dead. Yeah. The, the zombies got through. And it feels more like a loss, because... To him, the world was suddenly happy. He has beer. He's got people to talk to. They're dead now. That's when they do use color as well. Um, during those yeah, scenes, desaturates everything again. desaturates again. I was like, yes, I like this. But, and, you know, having come from, from a digital design background, as we all did from uni, yeah. playing with color is so much more interesting. You can do some fun things with color. Hmm. So I would highly suggest anyone, if you haven't, check out Zom 100. It's really fun. Yeah, I didn't know there was a live action, and now I'm kind of keen, so... I'll add it to my list of things to catch up on <laughs> that is a fucking mile. I'm finally going through the Star Trek uh, Brave New World and Lower yeah, Decks. and yeah. uh, Lower oh, Decks, I love. Tell us when you get to the crossover. I, oh, for yeah. the love of Christ. <laughs> I, I jumped ahead. I started yeah. watching Lower Decks, and then I... 
after listening to it, he's like, I was wondering if it was going to be a the live action crush in the anime, like after that point. But no, hmm. that didn't happen. So I went back and just cherry picked that episode and thoroughly enjoyed it enough to actually go back to the start yeah. of it yeah. and watch it. And I, I just really, love really loving it. When Mariner turns uh, up and they're sitting in that meeting, it's the whole thing of like Spock smiling. Like, oh God, he smiles. Like, yeah, it's horrifying. Just keep going. <laughs> he does that now. It's like Brave New Worlds is is to me the best mashup between New Trek and Old Trek that I've seen in ever. yeah yeah absolutely and definitely actually, like it just being so episodic feels very Old Trek and mm. just what they can get into in a single episode is fucking yeah. great without an overarching plot that has to tie yeah. everything together. Mm. Weirdly and, enough, I think it like the Orville kind of forced it back onto the old school track. Maybe. Because like, that was doing Ghostbusters. I, I recently went back and watched the the more recent movies, all three of them, mm. and mm-hmm. I enjoyed them as yeah. like They're popcorn, popcorn movies. Popcorn movies, like yeah. they worked well as like covering a larger, more detailed story without having to have six episodes dedicated mm. to a single arc. I I quite enjoyed those movies. I had a great time with them. But this just, I had a hard time watching. Um, it hits the nostalgia the, just right. What was the the last one that came out before Brave New Discovery. World? Discovery. Like Discovery. No. I had a hard time with that. I couldn't watch I got, it. I watched I got to all the of point it. With the, I got to the point with the tardigrades, and it's like I'm out. Yeah, I'm I'm done. The only reason to really watch Discovery is for the scenes with Pike in them, where he learns about what's ha- going to happen to him. Because they're good. Uh, the rest of it, See, nah, can't be bothered. That okay, my- so here's the setup for Brave New Worlds that you need necessary from Discovery. Pike knows that he's going to die. No, he knows he's not going to die, but he'll also be a vegetable for God knows how long. Yeah, sorry. Um, he's going to end up in the chair, he can only beep, and he'll save a bunch of people to do it. Yeah. See, That's I, it. That's the setup. Done. I started watching Brave New Worlds and thought, fuck, there's a whole thing that's happened here, and I bet it's happened in Discovery. Yeah. But I don't want to watch fucking Discovery. I'm just going to play out through this and well, that, that's, that I can get it. <laughs> that's the Can't basic backstory. Ship, Pike sees what happens to him. Yeah. yeah, and then he's going to end up as a vegetable in the chair after having saved a bunch. The of entire people. first That's season it. between him and number two is the entire like conversation of "Are you going to do it?" Um, and him watching these cadets rise through Starfleet. So yeah, though it isn't like how he's come across some of the characters that oh that name mm. oh fuck mm. I know that who that person's going to be and. Yep. Like, just some of those little things popping up here and there is like, that's pretty fucking cool. Yeah. But, yeah. I, I'm enjoying I'm it. Really enjoying it. I haven't enjoyed a Star Trek thing in a while, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been yeah. trying to get anyone who'll listen to me to, to check out Breaking Worlds. It's fantastic. Yeah. They, they kind of wandered yeah. away from, like, the original feeling of Star Trek, and that's finally back. Like, that yeah. and Lower Decks tying into it all is great. I'm so happy about Lower As Decks. As an old school Trekkie, I love Lower Decks. Yeah. Finally, something that's being, like, not finally, but I like that something's being casually irreverent. Yeah. Yeah. With the universe that's well, usually so serious. If they, so like, with Lower Decks, they can do something that is mm. inherently goofy and just fucking weird of all the shit that should be happening in the background of all these yeah. major events that you'd yeah. normally see in an episode. It's like, oh my god, the reactor's about to melt down. They're sitting on the bridge. Is it melting down yet? In engineering, they're gonna be fucking going nuts. Going, oh yeah. my fucking god, we're all gonna die. It's just good to be able to see that fucking mm. side of it. And yeah, yeah, that that's probably, for me, the fucking highlight of the whole thing. Like, just seeing, like, shit can be fucking weird. It's ha- fun. Yeah. Have you reached the Ascension episode? <laughs> yeah. I love that. Why does it burn? Why does it burn? Oh god, it's so much pain. <laughs> Did you catch the the Lower Decks reference in the crossover in the opening of um, Strange New Worlds, though? Of the, I think it's the critter hanging on the back of the ship. Is that no? Yeah, is that uh, the animated one. Um, after the Ascension, they they include the space koala. Yeah. Oh yes, no, and I did see in the that, opening yeah. of Strange New Worlds for the crossover, they put the the koala in the background. It's like yeah, yes. the koala. <laughs> the koala. Why is it smiling? What does it know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, great episode! That's my. If I can only give one episode to people to watch to get them into the show, that's the one I use. Yes, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. I've had a lot of fun with that. 
<laughs> and we key turns, turns off, off on the TV not... shows again. <laughs> yeah. New TV we shows. We go a time. long fucking way down TV shows. I mean, like, I've been watching a lot of shows lately. I mean, I'm finally watching the second season of The Bear. That's mm. really good. I've been working um, my way through the second season of From. That's been fun. Yeah, that's good I like too. From. Um, I just finished uh, both seasons of The Lincoln Lawyer. They were fun. Mm. Um, yeah. All the things that John Doe ain't watching. (laughs) I I play games or I listen to audiobooks. That's about it. See, the rest of us are all out here panicking about the writer's strike and the actor's strike and Des. It does not bother me. I've got back catalogues of shit to go through. (laughs) And then audiobooks. So many books. I have so many books books. on Audible at the moment that I just haven't started. Like, I need to. Yes. We're going to sink into this this month's book next week because yes. I haven't finished this month's book yet it's a very fun Although, but very dense book brief heads up it managed to get John Doe to stop doing anything but listen to the book I <laughs> can't do anything while I'm listening to this book because I either focus on what I'm doing or I focus on the book and I can't do both at the same time or I lose track of something somewhere Yeah, and <laughs> bad things happen when you're trying to pump wine into a 300,000 litre tank and you don't focus on the fucking pump so yeah, I can't do that. <laughs> the safety officer was not very happy. <laughs> so, but yeah, thoroughly enjoying it. It's just a dense book that yeah. I need to focus on. It's so yeah. good. More people need to listen to this book. True space opera, that is. Yes, yeah. it absolutely is. It's that strange, like the original space opera kind of feeling. It's like, yes, I love this. It, the, it's the kind of space opera where I'm genuinely hoping that the last scene in the last book is a fat lady singing. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fat alien singing, you're fine. You got seven <laughs> books of equal length and density. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a great series. But we'll talk about that more next week when we actually yeah. do book episode. <laughs> So, uh, moving on from a different kind of corporate greed. Yay, corporate greed! So, Street Fighter VI has uh, some TMNT costumes to purchase. Mm. And if you buy all four of them, you basically bought a second copy of Street Fighter VI. Yeah. Uh, 60 bucks for four skins. A skin. Uh. Like, who are they skinning over, actually? Is it... Or do yeah, they have their own actual movesets? Are there characters? Or, yeah, that's what I was wondering. Because 20 bucks like, for... They, like, it's just, uh, just a skin over a current character would be insane. I don't play six, Street Fighter 6, so... Neither do I. Uh, but it's one of those things, like... These should not be bought separately. You should bundle them together for 20 bucks, and then you have uh, Splinter... They're and... skins for the player's custom avatar. Ah, uh, okay, okay. so they're skin for generic character A. Skin for build your own. Yeah. Do you want to make a build a fighter? Here, have a turtle. <laughs> well, I mean, it feels weird that you're putting a custom skin, like you know, I want to be Leo. Cool. So, what was the point in having a custom character? Yeah. Yeah. Weird thing is, like, you all you need to do is buy one of them and then just change the color of the mask. It should have been a very easy one. And the the belt buckle letter. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. Either Come on, way, man, it takes. It, it, Come on. You did 3D animation. You know how much effort it takes to change one detail on a model. Yeah, that is true. It's not 15 bucks worth of effort. I know. Well, <laughs> like, God fucking damn. Like, oh. This should have been a pack of all four for fucking 20 bucks and then have another pack that has fucking Shredder, Splinter, April O'Neil. Yeah. Like, fuck. If you want to do Come on, Turtles, Bebop and Rocksteady. Oh, yeah, yeah, that'd be good, actually. There. Do the Actually, five pack and have that for twenty five bucks. Remember five. when like Soul Calibur had Yoda and, uh, and like, uh, like was it Darth Vader turn up? That was like <laughs> what five bucks at the most. Yeah, yeah. Like, but like you could have fucking uh, Casey, April O'Neil, Splinter, Shredder, uh, Bebop, and Rocksteady. There's six characters. Charge thirty bucks for it, and then have a separate four pack of these for twenty bucks. Yeah. God yeah. fucking damn! It's a more reasonable fucking pricing. There's your sixty bucks. But to be honest, it's not a complete fucking ripoff. At this point, why not just make an actual Street Fighter esque game for that world? Because that world has a shit what, ton of TNT. characters. Yeah, like a good one. Like there's a few around, but because the ten characters I just listed are probably the only characters worth playing. Yeah, I don't know. Like Ronan was in maybe that old school Kang. Oh, uh, uh, Kang maybe. Um, 
uh, if we talk about the the 2010 a fly and yeah. maybe a mouser <laughs> yeah if we went and with like the 2010 one there'd be a few soldier. more in there because they started getting into the weird shit in that one the more anime one yeah I think oh and the chick who runs the foot clan runs the what the, the girl who's Shredder's daughter. Oh, yeah. Um, Karai. Karai. Oh, mm. oh, going back to the the original cartoons, the neutrinos who come through with Krang. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Such a Either strange way, world. This pack is a fucking ripoff. Yeah, yeah don't yeah, get it. For the love of God. This is the newest version of horse armor. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very <laughs> expensive horse armor. Even horse armor is a fucking ripoff when you look at everything else. But mm. God fucking damn, this is just shit yeah literally a skin right. for a custom character build and it's like yeah no no it's although bad. you know still cheaper than horse armor and Diablo yeah true there are there's very few like things more expensive than horse armor and Diablo but. yeah the the next Mortal Kombat haven't they already started announcing DLC characters by showing video of those characters fighting so they're already made the game yeah. isn't even out yet I don't know if they're DLC characters. I know they just put out an announcement trailer that for Reptile. No, uh, I thought they had one for like a because they always do like external characters after release that are outside of the story. Yeah, um, I thought they were going to do another a Terminator one again, and there was someone else I seen. I'm trying to remember who it was, but mm-hmm. yeah, I thought it was shit. They announced some characters or released a video of these characters in game. Yeah when the game isn't even out yet. Actually, you know what game I really enjoy but haven't played in ages? Injustice. It was a pretty good fighting game. Yeah. Which like, was based... Which is pretty much reskin Mortal Kombat. Yeah, basically. Just with a very vague uh, Injustice storyline. Okay, they, you're correct. They have announced um, uh, their first DLC pack characters. Um, and it's Homelander, Peacemaker, and Omni Man. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, Omni Man would be fun. The video, the uh, the character, the bloke who voices <laughs> Omni Man is is also voicing the character in Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Oh god, I hope we get season two of that show. Well, oh, there's what? of uh, Invincible. <clears throat> it's already there's... slated. I can tell you what date it's uh, coming out. Um, nice. And there's also a. Uh, a short or a short series has come out as well because uh, Adam Eve, like it just follows her uh, yeah, story. Yeah. It's already available. Nice. Um, November third is the second season of Invincible. Excellent. Nice. Keen. I mean, we've only got to wait a couple more weeks, and then we get Ahsoka. Yes, no, that's gonna be fun, actually. <laughs> Goddamn keen for that. Oh, and Lower Decks is back in September. Nice. Oh, it's cool. I wasn't sure I was actually going to get a uh, another one. Yeah, apparently it's got another... Let me check. Uh, we don't have the episode count yet. Mm. But, uh, yeah. September 7th, uh, next season of Lower Deck. Excellent. Oh, yeah. Keen. I would generally enjoy a cross-back episode <clears throat> where, like, some people from Brave New Worlds comes into Lower Decks and that tries to sense. deal with that. I really think the only way that can go is Lower Decks to Brave New World. Yeah. Because I don't... I, I mean, I'm I mean, not saying it wouldn't work, but I just... I think the wacky characters going to the serious show works smoother than uh, the wacky character... The, the serious show going to the wacky show. But trying to watch the serious character have to deal with the bullshit and the full mental breakdown that have to go through to survive it would be fucking interesting. Even or, though, just, just like, imagine a have, um, callback with Spock just way for, you know, Have that as a way for Spock to deal with all these fucking emotions that are coming out mm. going to this world where it's like oh my fucking god like I need to pull this shit in no no you know what would be great animated Riker live action Riker <laughs> yeah that'd be fun because Lower Dex Riker is a caricature of Riker yeah so that would be delightful uh I I just love when he finds the saddles just Riker <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Actually, speaking of Riker, I've been watching um, the new series of Picard. So that's been fun. Mm. I'm enjoying that. Yeah, I haven't watched the newest one yet. It's a show I like, but that I just don't keep up on. Yeah. It's They try and do things occasionally where they cut back to when they were younger, and they're doing, like, the, the CGI um, face stuff for 
you know, Picard to make him look younger. Mm. It doesn't quite work, um, but it's not too off-putting. It's just right on the edge of that uncanny valley. It's like, ah, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm currently enjoying Star Trek between, like, Lower Decks and Brave New Worlds. Where, how does Picard stand up to that? Because I don't watch any of it. It's a bit uh, slower. It? The right. first season's pretty good. The other ones, you kind of need to really like the characters yeah. to want to watch more of it. First season's they pretty do good. Do a, they do do a good season that heavily involves Q. But yeah, actually, that was pretty it, good. It's, it's all about investment in the characters after that first season. Yeah. But, yeah, no, but second I'm not... I'm not so, like, I tell people, go watch Brave New Worlds. Go watch Lower Decks. Yeah. I don't really tell people to go watch Picard. If you like Picard, go for it. Mm. If you like the characters, go for it. Otherwise, it's fine for you to skip. Like, it's just been interesting just seeing a, a character who you're pretty sure a stiff breeze could knock over uh, somehow saving the day. It's like, this is strange, but okay. I will accept <laughs> random future stuff. Alright, I might find the first season and watch a few episodes and might uh, scratch the remaining uh, Star Trek itch. Yeah, that's mm. fair. Yeah, no, be good. I think they're like slow rebooting that entire universe, which I'm okay with. I, I think I, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. If Brave New Worlds becomes a new jumping off point, that's really not a problem for me. Yeah, I, I'd be quite happy. I do like their new Kirk. He is pretty fun. How do we get Actually, back onto Star Trek from Street Fighter Six? I know, right? Yeah, <laughs> and I'm about to talk about more TV shows um, because speaking of like reinterpretations of stuff, um, My Adventures with Superman is really good. Oh yeah, I have to watch that one because they've done a slight change on how Superman works. Um, we haven't had a confirmation in the show yet, but me and my housemate have a pretty good idea of what we think happens uh, happened. The idea in this one is it's Superman, but he doesn't have all these superpowers. He's only, at the start of the show, got strength, speed, and flight. Hmm. Um, and he can't he do anything else. He no. to unlock any extra abilities. He hasn't got them yet. Uh, he hell, he doesn't he even to... have his full strength yet. So he needs um, to level up. Well, the, we think... He's grind the when, he was a, <laughs> when he was a kid... Um, and this is really early in the show, so I'm not... It's a little bit of a spoiler, but it's not mm. a big one. It's like two episodes in. Um, when he was a kid and his parents took him to the, the Kryptonian ship after he first flew, um, the, you know, the, you know, the, the yeah. pillars all come up and it starts projecting the hologram of his dad. And it just starts yelling at him in a language he doesn't understand because he doesn't speak Kryptonian. Yeah. And it nearly kills his parents. Inadvertently, but it does. And he freaks out. So we're pretty sure he's, like, repressed the the uh, Kryptonian side of himself. So uh, he's going to have to unlock his powers as he needs them. Yeah. And, yeah, it's been really good because they have to focus a lot more on the Clark side of the equation because Superman isn't Superman yet. I like that. He doesn't have the abilities. There's an ep In one of the episodes, he jumps in front of someone because they're being shot, not knowing that he's bulletproof. Oh, nice. That'd be fun. <laughs> so, he did it because he needed to. Actually, the line is, um, did you know you were bulletproof? No, but I knew you were. <laughs> That's a nice. very Superman thing to say. Like, it is. Yeah. I like that. Straight down the line, Superman. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's really good. Although, the people who make it are weebs. They're oh, absolute yeah. weebs. Because, like, they're mechs. Like, I swear to God, if you put Solid Snake next to it, it'd be like, yep, that's Metal Gear. <laughs> um, when he first gets his Superman outfit, absolute full-on Sailor Moon-style magical girl suit-up sequence. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. I love this show. It's really, really good. And it is one of the best interpretations of Superman I've seen. Nice. I'm going to have to watch that one. Yeah, I would highly uh, recommend. I'll track that down somewhere. Ugh. Man, we did TV shows last week. Yeah, we have to jump on to something <laughs> else. Uh, what else were we talking about today? Uh, I mean, that's our, that was our big ones before we wanted to talk a bit about Baldur's Gate. Oh, yeah, because I've had far too much fun with that game. Actually, I think we're going to rant on Baldur's Gate for a little while. So, Probably. just before we get into that, I tried streaming games on Game Pass. 
Yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's right. We forgot about that. Sorry. Well, you forgot about this. My bad. So I'm going to have several weeks away from my main PC, which is pretty much where I spend majority of my life if I'm not at fucking work or sleeping. So mm. it's going to suck not being able to play games. So I thought I need to be able to find something that I can play on. So I thought, well, I've already got Game Pass. Why not see if I can do anything with it? And so I decided to try and stream a game. And I tried Hi-Fi Rush. I figured it's a rhythm game, so yeah. the inputs need to be on fucking point. you got to keep in time with the beat. It's fucking uh, an action-adventure guitar hero, pretty much. Hmm. And it worked. Like, holy shit, it actually worked. I couldn't run it on my home Wi-Fi. That was yeah. shit. Like, it's Australian NBN. It's fucking terrible. Yeah. But if I use, if I hotspot the 5G from my phone, that worked. That worked pretty fucking well. Nice. I doubt it'll work for multiplayer, but for a single player campaign, it worked. Mm. Particularly being able to like connect an Xbox controller to the tablet helped a lot. Like mm. if you don't have an Xbox controller, it does give you an overlay on the screen where you've got buttons that you can do everything with, but. I tried doing that on my phone and I couldn't either see the screen or hit the button at the right fucking time. It was a pain in the ass. Mm, fair. With an Xbox controller, it was so much better. It was unbelievable. I had a really hard time believing how fucking well it worked. I played through probably like the first, like finished the first boss and probably half of the, the next area. Nice. And it just worked. And for a rhythm game, that'd be pretty good because like you said, it would have to be like on point kind of thing. Yeah. The input like, lag wasn't all that great. Hmm. Like, it, provided I had a good connection from my phone. If I didn't, if it wasn't on five G, if it dropped from that to even full four G, hmm. it fucking started. I got yeah. screen tearing, input hmm. lag, every, the whole fucking hog. But if I had at least half of like three bars of five G, I didn't have an issue. Hmm. Yeah. So it's still not entirely feasible in Australia, but not entirely no. horrible. Like, yeah, I mean, it, it's better than I've ever seen it yeah. used in in this country. It, it'd probably work a lot better in the city, say in Brisbane, where you've actually mm. got a much mm. better NBN connection. But out here in the bush, they say you get 50 down, 25 up, but you do a speed test and you don't get over fucking 30 down or 25 down and maybe fucking five up. Yeah. Yeah. I was, my phone worked for it. If, nice. COD gets, if COD gets added to it, the campaign will run fine. I doubt the fucking multiplayer will, will, will work mm. greatly, but it is. If they add COD to it, Sony will be in real fucking trouble. Oh. Yeah, no, they, then they are going to be kind of screwed there. Although there yeah. was a, a thing recently where Sony admitted that there was a dip in their expected sales for the newest Final Fantasy game due to the lack of install base of the PS5. Well, no, that, was, uh, yeah. that was Square Enix um, like investor call. Mm. Oh, like, nice. Just straight out Sony, it was like Square Enix saying like, we've like... Sorry, really, I meant to say Square, not Sony. Yeah, they really under-earned for this fucking quarter um, and they're bl- putting a lot of the blame on Sony and their install base because yeah. Sony paid for it to be exclusive on the fucking thing. But uh, even in the, the investor call, they state that if it had released on PC at the, sta- at the same time, they may have doubled, if not tripled their sales. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but, I love that this like horrible shit they've been doing for so long is finally coming back to fuck with them. Yeah. yeah, it is. And particularly like after all of that, and Square is now signing deals with the Xbox to bring more fucking Final Fantasy to the Xbox consoles. Yeah. Like, between Final Fantasy XIV, it wouldn't surprise me if in the next few months they announce that Final Fantasy sixteen will either, if not be on the console, at least on a streaming service or mm. some part of it. Like, yeah. I think Sony's yeah. got a lot to fucking... A lot of broken shit to pick up at the moment. See, they need yeah. to build their own version of Game Pass... Or they either need to start releasing their first party games on the PC fucking sooner. Yeah. Maybe not day one, but at least six months. Yeah. Yeah. Has to be a fast turnaround for if they want to make like, a profit. Yeah, at least while there's still a little bit of hype around the fucking title. Like mm. maybe not in day one, but that first major like DLC drop six months down the track. Yeah. Throw it out there. there. 
while you got it the second hype cycle of it. Well, and at this point, like you know, like big things from Sony are coming to PC. Yeah, yeah. You can wait. Eventually, they will. So, given the fact that we got eventually, it took a while. Hmm. Um, the Final Fantasy VII remake. Yeah. And if there'd been one P- uh, PlayStation game I'd have called Never Makes It to PC, it would have been that. Hmm. See, for me, I because always didn't think Ratchet and Clank would ever escape Sony. Like, that's I kind of figured once um, we started getting things like Uncharted, I know that's a different company that's Naughty Dog, not yeah. Insomniac. Um, I kind of figured the damn had broken on that. Yeah, because they're like, they're like major, like fucking, here's our title fucking games. Like, mm. I never thought I'd see a God of War off the PlayStation yeah. Game, yeah. Off console. Absolutely. Like, that. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn is like okay it's not really a, a major fucking thing sure it was an exclusive but it didn't have like as big a following as some of these other titles they dropped right. that and I thought this is pretty cool Days Gone oh okay it was Sony exclusive that's awesome and then they dropped God of War like, oh yeah yeah now everything is on the table yeah that was something I never thought I'd see off offside even off God of War I still would have never called Final kind of Fantasy yeah Despite the fact that that got a PC release back in the day, it's it's associated with the PlayStation. Mm. Yeah. No one expected the remake to go anywhere but there. The fact that it came to PC, we was like, yeah, we can wait. Yeah, we know it's coming. Eventually, we'll like, get the thing. Like, really and probably that's Sony, it. Sony's only real play they've got from here is to try and develop their own version of Game Pass. Yes. Yeah. I think that's, that's why they're pushing they this lawsuit do. so hard. Like this was like their hail mary to try and they, slow it down. They even like they've got recordings of Jim Ryan, like testimony from Jim Ryan saying that uh, it had nothing to do with stop, like with them stopping buying that, or we knew uh, Call of Duty was <laughs> not or was not going to leave the PlayStation. We just didn't want them to have it. Yeah, they just wanted yeah. to stop the deal, not that it would affect PlayStation in any fucking way. Mm. Yeah, but. Sony really needs to look at what their actual future fucking game plan is because yeah yeah or, holy fuck they got a long fucking way to go yeah they also have a very long way to fall which means it's going to be hilarious to watch so yeah I'm yeah. hoping it's one of those it, slow tumbles down a staircase which would be great with the okay. feel like as it currently is like um there's a, a big thing on fucking Twitter with Baldur's Gate where, where all the Sony uh, a lot of fucking Sony fanboys are coming out mm. saying that uh, Baldur's Gate is a PlayStation exclusive. Like, no, no, no it's like, not. you can't even play it yet, motherfucker. Yeah. It's on yeah. PC, and it's also coming to Xbox. Like, the the head of Larian Studios got on there and uh, retweet, like, replied to like a hundred people saying, "No, you can't even play it. It's already on PC. You're not even part of the eight hundred thousand player base yet. Yeah, and it's coming to Xbox, dude." Did oh, you man. see the fucking statistic? Like, I feel like this is the natural changeover. Oh yeah, of yeah, absolutely. But, but did you see the fucking statistics on that launch? Oh yeah, yeah. No, it, really. it like Fuck. annihilated Steam for a day. Yeah. yeah, because everyone was trying to download this fucking game. Yeah, and it was one. I think it's like their biggest. Um, it's one of their biggest day one launches, like download wise. Yeah, yeah. I'm so um, glad it I outstripped uh, Cyberpunk, which was one of the biggest, by something like a factor of three. Yeah. And Larian Studios had been like, "Look, conservatively, we think we'll get a hundred thousand people to play this game on day one." Yeah. Seven hundred thousand people. Well, and that's... more to the point, their server didn't fall over. Yeah. Yeah. And it was playable. Like it wasn't just, "Oh no, it's broken." Three quarters of our player base can't start the game. It was playable. You could get in and do shit. Mm. That's almost a fucking unheard of of fucking yeah. games now. You plan, but like, if they planned for seven hundred thousand and got seven hundred thousand, be like, yeah, cool, nicely worked. Yeah, you did your thing right. Yeah, but that they planned for one hundred thousand, got seven hundred thousand, and didn't collapse. Yeah, like, dude, yeah. Blizzard. Every other person trying to launch a game with some kind of digital connection that's required, be on notice. <laughs> this but, is how you do it and, right. But have you seen all the other fucking RP, like companies that make RPGs saying, oh, no, 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 this is an outline. Like, this this isn't going to be a new standard for RPGs. Like, <laughs> no one can do a game like this. Like, well, they did. Like, the bar is raised. This shit. Fucking oath it is. 
Like, oh, uh, so this is the like final form of what Larian's been working on for years. Oh, yeah, fucking oath. Like, you can see where it went from um, uh, Divinity and Divinity Two. Like, the step between those, mm, and yeah. then to this. Like, holy fuck! And this That's is the not night and day. That's a whole nother fucking planet. Yeah, it's such a well crafted game as well. Like, I've only just left that first major area that you start yeah. in just all the, the oh. little hidden shit and the yeah. interactions like even mm. between your own characters and between themselves mm. it's just holy fuck it's got some yeah. depth that you don't even see yeah 100% like I've picked up a few characters so I switch between them every so often just to try and get like different encounters with the other characters so it's but, been fun like even like when you're going to that that first area mm. and there's like that crypt that you can stumble across mm. yeah like, like I, I nearly think died. fell into it and from the top of it I thought well I'm going to jump into here it'll be maybe three rooms and then I'll come out this door and then mm. that'll be it this, this is going to be nothing no no that took me several hours to yeah. go through all of that and that's just trying to find all the little hidden shit and deal with the people that are in there and the, the traps and and then oh, there's a side dungeon to go so down much, where you, yeah. you get like an undead guy to like help you out and yeah uh, and you might you might not even find that unless you're willing to roll the dice of flip a random skull switch. It's like, yeah. uh, shit, do I really want to fucking sweep this thing or is it just going to kill me? The great thing yeah. is, like, you can leave that area without him and not have an ability to raise your characters from the dead. And and never have known it. Yeah. And not, I like, found it by accident. Walked, yeah, if you hadn't walked past and you'd failed the, the, the check to notice that fucking yeah. switch... You would have gone to that door. Oh, it's locked. I, I, there's probably a way to find it somewhere, but I don't know where it is. Yeah. I'll keep going there and I'll come back to it later and then never gone back to it. Pretty much. And you've lost an entire, almost essential part of the game and never even known it. It's yeah. just a bit... Hey. Not going to lie, I have and had to bring a couple of characters back a few times for fall damage. Uh, that's good times. <laughs> I mean, like, truly good role-playing games are willing to let you miss content. Yeah, yeah, fucking oath. Like that's that's what D and D's all about. Like it's like you need to cross his chasm. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to try and jump it. You know, three quarters of your party dies from jumping until the last person says, "Is there a bridge?" Yeah, it's <laughs> twenty feet down the way. Yeah, you just like, go over there. Be fine. I mean, hell, like that crypt. You could decide you don't want to fuck with it because there's like six guys at the front. Yeah, yeah. And depending on how much you've explored the main area, you could be on your own. I accidentally uh, convinced them to run away. Like, I didn't accidentally. I intentionally did it. <laughs> well, nice. I went. I went through and like at, early on in the game, I didn't know really what it was to send a character off to camp, mm. and so I'd sent two of them off to camp. There was only me and the the wizard running around there, and yeah. we stumbled across this, and there's like only two of us. Like, ah, uh, god, fucking damn, like. I really had to think about how I was going to deal with these fucking six people and try and not fucking die. Mm. Yeah, well, it was yeah, fucking good. It took you me a while see to that. Realize. Decide not right now. I'll come back later. As you say, never return. It's yeah. a big crypt. There's mm. lots of loot down there. The characters down there are great. Yeah. Interacting with that troop of guys is actually pretty fun. Yeah. There's a whole experience there which you could just be intimidated away from. I love that the fact that all three of us, though, saw that fucking stone hanging above the things. Like, I'm, I'm breaking that. Yeah. Because oh, we all went the same the way. way and but we all ended up in the ambush. Despite the fact that the door is right there and you yeah. can just go in the so, door. <laughs> you can look at that and go, that's an obvious door. There's a trap. Whether well, there's yeah. a trap there or not. And it turns, well, for me, there wasn't. I don't know if there wasn't yours or not. No, there wasn't. I didn't even go me. near that fucking no, door. I, I just design. seen that block of the. That's how I'm going in. The I'm only going way, going I just my own way. Thought, the only way I went I through that door was the D and D game me and you played years ago. Mm. No, you went in the game then, um, with our old DM Dingo, um, where we got we we found what was over the top of the final room of the dungeon. Yeah, and we just dug down. Yeah, <laughs> I accidentally so did that. I saw that stone block. I was like, I'm just going to shortcut to the end. Yeah. <laughs> And then I drive down, Did and you... I didn't realize that the sound of the roof caving in had drawn the entire group of people down there. Yeah. yeah. So I dropped down, like, oh, God, I am surrounded. For the love of God, wall of thorns. Just please die to AoE damage. <laughs> but uh, even that, like, the way we all dealt with that ended up being very fucking different. Mm. Like, Swish had wall of thorns. I didn't have that ability. 
I. Yeah. Neither did I. So, uh, my rogue, every time he'd looted something, just happened to find a fucking vial of oil. So, his entire role was to stand in the corner and throw fucking bottles of oil outside of the door there just to yeah. make a wall of flame whenever I got someone to cast fireball just to crowd control. Yeah. To funnel them through the single door that was on fucking fire. That's the only <laughs> way I, I dealt with it. You see, I, As I took my uh, barbarian, put them in the doorway, nice. made them rage to get damage reduction and extra hit points, and just had them hard tank it while the mage yeah. and the rogue shot everything with ranged magic <laughs> and arrows. Nice. Meanwhile, I'm a druid, so I'm just like, ah, nature kill it! <laughs> <laughs> uh, just the, the sheer like, options that you have. Yeah. Like, um, apparently, I, I was reading an article today, someone managed to break the game by teaching their wizard too many spells. Yeah, no, I had to stop so, teaching my wizard some spells for a bit, I think. So I didn't want to overpower um, it. I, I didn't realise, like, it took me a little while to realise, oh, I can teach the wizard other sc- other spells because I've got a scroll here and I can just spend some gold to fucking do it. Like, that makes life so much fucking easier when I'm trying to find a fucking certain ability. But if you don't find those abilities, it's a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. But like, uh, and my favorite thing is finding the say, necklace of hmm? Speak to Dead. Yeah, I have used that thing inappropriately so many times. <laughs> I'm not surprised, given that I played a character who could speak to the dead in Divinity Two, hmm. and there's a lot of fun conversations you can have. Like even, so, I'm entirely unsurprised to hear that they have a amulet of Speak to the Dead, and they keep doing shenaniganery. My favorite thing is, like, there's, gets to this little village, or the grotto, um, and there's this chick, you know, crying over the fact that her, her, I think his brother or father has passed during the fight. And I've walked up, like, oh, what happened to him? So I summoned the dead to talk to him. In front of his <laughs> crying daughter. Like, ah, oh, I'm a bad person. But, I'm playing a drow. It, just, it seemed fitting. But, all of that, like, if you didn't happen to come across that talk to undead, or if you didn't find it till much later, yeah, there's entire conversations and yep. a whole nother option uh, that you've missed out on. The speak with animals spell alone brings in so many strange dialogues. It's great. I got yeah. a quest from a fucking blue jay the other day. Yep, like it was great. So again, straight from Divinity Two. Yeah, I played that character. I had speak to dead, speak to animals. I got all the weird quests. Yeah. I am so... You don't understand how happy I am to hear that they're still doing this shit. Yeah, it's fucking great. I, I love it. There's one cow that I was talking to that was weirdly intelligent, like, more intelligent than everything else. Like, you're weird, but I failed the arcana check. I'm like, no! I don't want to reset because I didn't save the last hour. <laughs> F5, buzz, save scumming yeah. came in. <laughs> Pretty much. I've started save scumming now because I learnt my lesson. <laughs> I'm trying very hard not to get save scum. Like, when I fell down that hole, it was like, okay, I just gotta deal with it. Oh, yeah. Well, things I, like, yeah I'll go until I die. It out. But I, I learned, like, by playing a lot of the beta that I needed to fucking save scum for certain parts of it. Sometimes you just walk around the corner and, oh, shit, I've been ambushed by double my fucking party number. Uh, shit, I'm not I, prepped for this fight. I walked around a hallway and got a beholder to the face. It was fucking horrible. Yeah. <laughs> You were in the Underdark, you deserved it. That, that is true. But this, I, I knew it was had there was an option down there. I was like, oh, I could run into something big. It's just round the corner. Fucking seek. Was it a, um, a searcher or a watcher or one of the variants of Beholder? Just turns up and starts fucking me up. I won in the end, but I had to run like a bitch that first time. Although, I gotta say, this game is fucking gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It is pretty Holy as fuck. Hmm. And like, like, although every- my fucking Dragon Ball looks real dumb right now. <laughs> yeah. I, I find the weirdest hats I can for my um, my companions. Uh, but, like I, I, like, I hadn't played any of the beta. Hmm. I had specifically decided, given how, the type of game this was, I didn't want to, because I'd actually done that with one of the Divinity games. Yeah. And it kind of ruined the start of the game for me when I wanted to play the whole game, because hmm. I had to slog through the start. So I decided I wouldn't play it. Damn, man! That whole fucking opener is just—it's <laughs> it's banging, brutal. Man. Oh, it's great! It's so good, but goddamn, it's brutal. Those fucking uh, the tadpoles. Like, yes. Holy yeah. shit, uh, that's fucked up. Yeah, but, it was so good though. And you're, you're, I, like, going through hell at one point, picking up some travelers is always fun. Yeah, <laughs> but there's a whole section 
like a whole fight area on the ship yeah. that was in the beta that isn't in the main game. Oh, like, okay. nice. there's like three or four whole room, other rooms where you're fighting the the little goblin fuckers, hmm. um, where you learn jump mechanics and dash mechanics and certain others. You could also go on the the outer deck of the whole ship and you had to fight off larger fucking demons by firing cannons. There nice. was a whole several other sections before you got to that bridge room. Yeah. Pretty much that bridge room was the start of these areas that mm. have now been cut out. It's just, mm. like, interesting the difference that came to it. Yeah. but Maybe they'll reappear later. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Maybe if you end up on a, another one of those fucking ships. But something else that's really fucking weird, like, I started playing with a keyboard and mouse, mm. and, like, mm. I quite enjoyed it, but some of the pathing was a bit of a bitch. Yeah. So I was talking to Swoosh about it, and I watched him stream it on Discord, and he's playing with a controller. And controller it's a very, so very different game. Yeah. Because that gives you a third-person camera view, and you just run around with a stick. You're not clicking to move to a point. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm going to have to fire this up with a controller and have a look it, at it. It's this. actually... Yeah. Sur- I, I swear they've optimized it's, the game for controller now. Like, properly optimized. It's an entirely whole t- style of game. Yeah. Once you learn the triggers and what they do, um, it takes yeah. a second, but yeah. And no, they, he, like... Good you got to pretty much hold the, the left and right shoulders to, like, pretty much pull up your wheels of options oh, no. of what you want to do. All you have to do is, like, tap it, because I keep holding it. It always goes uh, far yeah. to the fucking left. Like, I keep forgetting. Oh, tap yeah, it. I, I kept <laughs> holding it. It took me a little while. But, holy fuck, that, that's a whole different... They've almost made a second game with this control style. Yeah. It's fucking wild. I don't even I'm know I'm honestly surprised to hear that, because, like, it's an isometric game. Of course I want to use a mouse and keyboard. Yeah. All right, they'll make some exceptions for the keyboard, the console plebs. Oh, this sounds really fucking cool. It's all radial menus, but you can, like, customize them really well. Oh, woo. But even just moving around the world is just so different. Like, holy fuck. If if I hadn't seen Swoosh, I just would have assumed that it was the exact same as the keyboard and mouse. But Hmm. anyone who fucking plays it, try it with a keyboard. Just have a look at it. Yeah. Like, I was genuinely curious of how well this would play on the console because it's not a style of game you generally assume mm. would work well on a console. No. Yeah. Like, I I was thinking more of, like, having to use the, the left stick to move an on-screen mouse around to pick where you want it to go and then that'd be mm. a, a bitch for targeting because it's, it's awkward. Mm. But being able to play it like this? Holy shit. Yeah. I got sick it of the pathing too so quick, well. so I plugged in the control. Like, the pathing was fucking weird. I'm like, nope, not dealing with this. So... It, yeah. Keyboard and mouse is easier to find and pick up loot. You just, you just yeah. hold, like, walk to an area and hold Alt, and it highlights everything. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, but, like, um, you can switch between them because like, if you want to use the control uh, for running around and stuff during battle, you can switch it back, and it changes the HUD for you, like back to the original kind. And, oh hell yeah! And if you're on keyboard and mouse, press O, and it gives you an overview, a full top down of the entire battlefield. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Yeah. I was just like, well, there's so many options here. What do these other buttons do? So I just start tapping buttons. And it's like, holy shit, there's a full, like, straight out, top down tactical view. Nice. And you can play the entire game just with that, as though you're looking at a D&D grid map and cool. just click in squares and off they go. That's cool. I like that. I, uh, this is this is setting, like, just such an absurd, like, if you want to make a, uh, an isometric RPG... You're going to be compared to this shit for oh yeah, oh, years. yeah. This Absolutely. is a fucking. This is a benchmark. This if is a labor out, of love. Like they, if they came out in the first DLC pack, is a map maker like yeah. a make your own adventure for it. There yeah. is a going to be a big fucking shake up in the market. Definitely. Yeah. Like, I couldn't I think mean, of one. They'll remake Baldur's Gate one and two. Yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> but in seconds, we have first things that fucking happen, but. Holy shit! If they come up with that, saying that you can make your own adventure or import your own maps, do whatever the fuck mm. you want with it, mm. yeah, that's gonna be fucking different. Oh, it's gonna be fun because like, they obviously so. enjoyed making this game. Like it has oh, yeah. a soul to it. I love it. Mm. But um, that they, they're also saying like we didn't want to release a game with like a whole fuckload of DLC that some people will buy and some people don't. So. <laughs> We just re- we launched it with everything. You know what else is great? 
the fact you can pay a hundred gold and change your class at any time. Yeah. Like. You're not locked in. Yeah, and it auto levels you back to where you were. Like any NPC you pick cool. up auto levels to your level. Like, yeah, yeah. I which is fucking great. I love it because if you pick someone up much later, so I don't have to grind through and do shit. It's like, no, nah, yeah, fuck it, just I, have one. I don't want to carry an anchor, and then yeah. they just pull up to your level. Because huh. like I'm enjoying I, uh, my druid because I'm playing the circle druid, so I can have talk to animals. But I might go back and be a spore druid because that's yeah. an option. I, I thought about pulling up a spore druid just to be a cloud of death. Yeah, but I'm a ranger. I like rangers. <laughs> ranger with the next uh, playthrough I try, I think, or well, next time I try and go through it. Yeah, the fact that I'm looking down the barrel of like a hundred hour RPG and I'm like already planning second run. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but there has there ha there have been a few issues with it that people have yeah. found. So, say you start a multiplayer game and one of your friends decides to jump in, um, they've had an issue of you can't dismiss that character from your party. Ah. And the character doesn't level until that person comes back to level them up. Mm. So apparently that's one of the major bugs they're trying to fix at the moment. I don't know if it, they... I just noticed there was a, a patch that dropped today that was yeah. only like a hundred and something meg. So maybe they've patched it, but that was... If that's your only complaint from a game that's had 800,000 plus oh. players, like, holy oh. shit. For first well, run jitters, did, pretty good. Well, they did early access correctly. Yeah, yeah. Fuck they used it as an actual beta. They had it as a beta. Yeah, like I, from when it first came, I I got it within like two months of when they f released the first the early access, and I played it on and off here and there. Hmm. I would play it for a little bit, then I'd uninstall it, and I'd go back to it a year or six months or whatever it is later and play a little bit more and. I, I think mm. in that entire time I only got off that Nautilus twice or three times because every time I go through it it'd be a little bit different and oh mm. shit I got a shitty roll here and I died okay yeah. I'll start again ah oh, fuck it can't be bothered just that's the luck of the roll yeah mm. and just the change from there to now is like holy jeebus yeah well mm. because they had so many players beta testing chunks of the game at a time yeah they were actually able to eliminate the bugs yeah shock horror and and the, the beta, the furthest you could get was the end of Act 1. Yeah. That was it for the beta. Mm. So you didn't ruin, like, 65 to 70% of your entire fucking game by having beta testers go through and say, like, well, I've found everything I can. Now there's nothing here. Yeah. Like, mm. here's your opening area. Now good fucking luck. But yeah. Act 1 is big enough that you can test most mechanics. Yeah, so yeah, absolutely. You weren't really worried about, oh, we never really fully tested the Paladin. Oh no, they did. They yeah. absolutely and did. And you can yeah. level up quite a ways in it. Though yeah. I think I think you can only get to level 12 at this point in the game. Yeah. I don't think you can get to full level 20 yet. And the only chose you can get to level 12 is so you could get level 6 spells. Yeah. Because mm. I'm at level 6 so, at the moment. That's taken me a while. Yeah. So I'm curious if in the future, like if they do release a, a DLC area or if they do something hmm. else, like I have no doubt there's going to be people that are modded in there so that you can go up to level 20, but you might have to multi-class to do it or yeah. like, cause the game's only built for up to level 12 for hmm. a particular class. So like you can already multi-class in the game. So there's no Pretty reason much. to say you can't. Yeah. Like, hmm. If you can't double class, maybe triple class, quad class, like, just keep Have getting one character strong. with every class. <laughs> be amazing. Have a have a druid with all three subclasses. <laughs> Ooh, that'd be fun, actually. But no, I'm I'm having a lot of fun with the circle druid just because it gets you the better wild shape. Because um, like I just unlocked Albear, so the second we finish this, I'm getting food, and then I'm going to be an Albear and murder <laughs> some uh, some goblins. But yeah, it's been fun. Yeah, well. I'm going to eat and then I'm going to try and play because I have to drive for 12 hours tomorrow so I'm probably going to have an early night and not be able to play for fucking three weeks. Yeah. Uh, you got to get your fix in well, now while you still can. At least you've got a long audio book for the car ride. Yeah, I've still got 10 hours left of that and at least I can... Though, if I have to focus on the book, can I focus on driving? <laughs> Hopefully. Like, driving at this point is kind of muscle memory on the long run. But... Yeah, I'll be on the highway and just go. She'll mm -hmm. be right. Yeah. Alright, okay. well, we're out past an hour, so I think we're done for the week. Wonderful. 
Y'all have a good one. Later. See ya.